Yeah. So far, we've seen 18 players on the COVID-19 reserve list, according to NFL media. These are the guys that are testing positive on the way in. So far, there's been transparency as to the players who test positive. And yesterday we were talking about opt-outs. Lauren du- duvernay Tardif of the Chiefs was the first guy to opt out Friday night. That's one. Another seven or eight have opted out since then. We're going to put a full tracker together at PFT. Marcus Cannon, the veteran Patriots oh, that's offensive official? lineman. Yeah, he is opting out. Wow. And this is a guy who's had cancer. He's a guy whose cancer was discovered at the scouting combine. Right. In 2011, he had a growth for like five years, and it was downplayed by doctors. And a couple of teams finally said, you need to get a biopsy. And it turned out he had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So he's he's beaten that, and uh, he's, he's in one of the risk categories. So he's one of the ones who is uh, opting out. And uh, again, if you opt out, your contract gets told until next year. If you opt out in a high-risk category, you get $350,000 in a stipend. In a non-high-risk category, you get $150,000. It's an advance on next year's salary, and if you don't make the team, you got to pay it back. Ooh. Good luck, collect- Good luck I collecting, know. though. I right? was going to say, and, like, and, you're going to look real and, cool as a team asking for a guy for you know money back after the you know COVID-19 and a bunch of billionaires asking for guys yeah. like that. That's not going to be good. Ha- how, how dare you, after a year off of football that you conscientiously chose to take because we told you you could, you couldn't make the team the next year because you haven't played now in 20 months, how dare you fail to make the roster, give us back our $350,000? That's going to be a bad look it is. if anybody tries to enforce that. Yeah. Demarcus Lawrence, the Cowboys defensive lineman, has suggested maybe he would opt out. He is going to show up for – the start of training camp today. The window still isn't closed on opting out, Chris. I think there's going to be a category of guys who have the attitude of, I'm going to go and see how I feel. Right. I'm going to go and see what it looks like. I'm going to go and just get that, you know, the the equivalent of when you lick the finger and you put it up in the air and you see which way the wind's blowing. You just want to get a sense of how seriously the team is taking it. And if you feel like they're taking it seriously enough, that's a factor in not opting out. If you show up and say, well, th- this is just going to be a train wreck, uh, then you say, see you later. And maybe you have to give it a few days to get to that that sense where you have a gut feeling as to what you should do. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I would think there's going to be a number of guys that are kind of going into training camp with a little trepidation. Just, I don't know what to expect. Is this good? Is this smart? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Hey, honey, I'm going to go and kind of just get a feel for it and see if it what what's been put in place can make me feel comfortable and you're right I would think we see a few guys uh, at least a handful of guys drop out you know after they've gone for a few days and they realize like wow this is some pain in the butt this is unstoppable I don't know about this I don't feel comfortable when the locker room still I know we're spaced whoever there's going to be guys that are not going to feel comfortable the big thing is we've yet to have that major star like and and if if, if Demarcus Lawrence does that you know, I think that's going to open some eyes. And that's that's a game, game-changing game move as far as just the competitive balance of the NFL this season. Dallas, we know. They're good on paper. They're talented. They have one little – you know, they have an issue on their team. It's probably pass rusher. And now you're going to lose their best pass rusher? That would be a big blow to that football team just on the field alone – but might also embolden other stars a little bit to go, you know what, I'm, I'm okay. You know, his backlash wasn't that bad. I can sit out if, now that I feel uncomfortable. You know, I just wonder if some guys are afraid to deal with the peer pressure as well. You know, you got to deal with the peer pressure. Wait, I want to make money. Uh, wait, I don't want to bring the virus home to, you know, my kids who might have asthma or my mom or my grandma who lives with me, which goes on a lot in the NFL. And I think those are all the things that are uh, going to be interesting to see here over the next week and you know what there may be a disconnect between what players say publicly about those who choose to opt out and what they say privately among themselves or in their text message chains because th- there is that that uh bravado yeah that goes machoism in football, in football and, definitely. yeah and, yeah and 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 you know what if demarcus lawrence decides to walk away uh, I would suspect that the Cowboys would would take the money that they were going to pay Lawrence this year and uh, issue his number ninety to J- to Jadavian Clowney and say, "Here you go, it, it, um, you're right. Join join the team. Yeah, uh, we got a spot for you." So uh, we'll see if those dominoes fall. But you're right, uh, no star player yet. Will it happen six days until the window on opting out closes? Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights. 
from NBC Sports.